Hi Homeworthy, I'm Rosalind. Welcome to my home in London. Let me show you around. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. My name is Rosalind Miller and this is my home in London. My background is actually, I would say, as a scientist. So I started out my career as a chemist and I later went on to do a master's and PhD in public health and that led me into a career in academia um, where I worked as an assistant professor at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, which is an amazing institution and a very beautiful building if you ever get the chance to visit London. I'm not an artist. I spent most of my childhood doing sports and playing really competitive tennis. I wasn't good at art, but during the process of this renovation that we just completed, I've really sort of found this creative side and unleashed all of my creative ideas and things that are in my head and colours and almost put it onto paper or into the house as it were. But given my background, I almost find it a bit of a surprise to be hit, sat here talking to you guys about interiors and my home. Welcome to my beloved hallway, which is where we store all of the coats and shoes. And as you will notice, they are not on show. So when we renovated, I said before, my number one thing was that I wanted all of the hallway clutter that we normally used to be tripping over the minute we came in, hidden away. And so I designed and my builders built this beautiful <laughs> cupboard and it's just, I'm just all about the function. We could sit down and put our shoes on, which is here, and everything is stored in here. So originally, I obviously had visions of everything being stored, and it looked like we have so many coats that there wasn't actually going to be enough space for coats and shoes. So my builders ended up doing this really clever trick where we put in a little like high up thing that you pull down, and that enables us to have all this extra shoe space under there, which I think is a really neat trick. This area where I am actually used to be a kitchen. So you used to come in and the kitchen was all on this level. And when you do an extension in a Victorian terrace, you create this notorious middle room that is a sort of th thoroughfare and people have done all sorts with them. Some people make it into a cosy little snug because they're often a little bit dark because it's in the middle of the house. And I just knew that the coat storage was a massive priority. So we have got that. And when we go down, you'll see what I've put in the rest of the space that used to be the kitchen. So another little thing that I've got in here is this little cubby. I wanted an old piece of furniture because I just think that mixes things up and I don't like everything to be too shiny. So I love the green of this. I found it on eBay and then we ended up, I got this before this whole section was built. So they were able to build the staircase and everything. So it fits absolutely perfectly. And that's where, you know, we keep our work IDs and school lanyards, keys. Everybody's got their own cupboards. There's one drawer dedicated for hair, a hairbrush and hair bands because hair bands are always going missing so the idea of having a dedicated space my hope was that we would know where to find them so that's just a really handy thing that makes family life that little bit easier these little candle holders i think are really adorable they're from a an online vintage store called wallace vintage and i've bought a few things she especially she's amazing at lighting she sources really sweet things and then i've just popped in the brightest pink candles i can find one of my favourite things to do in London is go down to Columbia Road on a Sunday where they have the flower market. There's an amazing cake shop called Lily Vanilli, so don't miss that. And then there's a gorgeous candle shop that has all these little coloured glasses, that you vases to put flowers in, and the most amazing array of candles you've ever seen. So I love to go there and I've got pretty much a whole drawer in my kitchen of every colour that you can imagine. Although the house is finished there, it is still a work in progress. If I waited for the house to be finished to invite you guys in, you would never come. 
So we are in London. My home is based in North London. I am a born and bred Londoner and I actually grew up not far from here in a really beautiful Victorian house and this house is also from the Victorian era and not too far from my mum which is nice. So the home as I said it's a period property uh, dating back to the Victorian era and I'd say that the style of the home is actually quite traditional and I grew up as I said in a Victorian property and I really love those features. The house actually it's an end of terrace, so it's a little bit different from the others in the terrace. And it actually was a commercial property. So I was standing outside early on when we had recently bought the house and a man stopped me and said, do you know about the history of your house? I said, no. And he said, it actually used to be a bakery and I used to play with the baker's son. So although it is a period property, a lot because it was used for commercial purposes, a lot of the original features weren't here. So there aren't lovely fireplaces, there, wa there wasn't any ceiling coving and we did try to put in a few of those things. But although the style is traditional, I try to add my own little take and give it a little bit of a modern twist by using colour. And as we go around the house, that will become quite evident. Now I'll take you down to the rest of the middle room. So then we're going to go down to the, the stairs, note the minty risers in my favourite colour, into the rest of the middle room. As I said, this all used to be on one level and the house actually used to end here. So this was the kitchen and it was really dark and it was quite small and it felt like for the size of the house, the living area, which was this kitchen and living room, was quite small compared to the rest of the house. So that was our thinking behind doing an extension and as I said what to do with the middle room is an age-old question I think for people doing extensions and we've got our hallway covers that I talked about but what we ended up doing is this putting this beautiful piano here so this piano is from the house I grew up in and I think it's really beautiful I'm not a major piano player I tinkered with it a little bit as a child my kids tinker with it a little bit as children and I think it's just a really nice thing to have in the heart of the home and obviously it's really nostalgic because it's from my childhood and we designed all of the dimensions and all of the space to make sure it fit and then on the other side is my desk and my work area um, thought about maybe putting a sofa here or some chairs just to chill out and relax but actually we've got quite a lot of seating in the kitchen and in the living room so that felt unnecessary and I don't really like the idea of being locked away in a room, squirreled away from everything else doing my work. I actually really like being in the heart of the home. I'm right next to the kitchen. I can make endless teas and coffees. And um, my kids play computer games here. They do their homework. It's just a really useful space. Or if you just wanna jump on and do a quick email, but the kids are about, so I, I feel like it just works. And it's not ideal when I'm on a call and my kids are standing behind <laughs> as I'm on a Zoom call. That's maybe the downside of having your space there. But it's really functional. And so this is like my area. So I've got pictures of my friends and the kids. And this notice board was made for me by this lovely small business, this lady that I found on Instagram called Handmade by Harriet. And she does these custom notice boards. And obviously I got her to make me one with rainbow ribbons. And it just... Every time I sit there and I'm working, I've got my rainbow glass, I've got my really cute notice board with lots of people that I love on it, and I've got this really pretty picture too, because let's be honest, it is always grey and raining in London. So it just makes me feel happy when I'm working. So as you can see, I've collected a few little things that I've put on display here. The colour glass, I just can't get enough of it, and I hope to maybe one day for this collection to maybe splurge over to this side. But it's stuff, I picked up some of it in a thrift store in Sweden, some of it here, some have been gifts, and I really like just arranging them in a color coded series. And it's just very aesthetically pleasing. And then on this side, as I said, I would like the glass collection to grow, but for now I've just put some other favorite little bits and bobs that I've collected. 
I got this really cute tea set in a shop in Bordeaux on a trip with some girlfriends and I bought it, I originally had eight and I bought it back on the Eurostar, carried it and then as I got to St Pancras International the bottom of the bag opened and or it was quite close to the floor and the bottom bits all smashed so every time I look at it I think oh it could have been more but luckily I've still got a few in my favorite color and just some other little bits this really cute this tea set was actually a woman a really lovely woman who makes prints she saw it in a local charity shop she's one of my Instagram friends and she tagged me and said oh Ryan Ray Rosen would really love this and I messaged her back I said would you get it for me <laughs> if I send you the money and she did so that's the good side of social media I guess So welcome to the kitchen. As I said, the kitchen used to be in the room where we just were. And where I'm standing, actually, it used to be an internal courtyard. So the layout was pretty quirky before. There was, from about here, this whole left side was a corridor. And that, you, from the entranceway, that there, was, there was a door. And you walked down this quite thin, wasn't a super usable space, quite thin corridor which led to an office at what is now the back of the patio. So this area, you would step out from the kitchen into this internal courtyard, which was, it was not super inspiring. It was just a piece of concrete really. And then there was the office, as I said, at the end. And now it's really, our kitchen before was a little bit dark. It didn't get loads of light. And the glass roof has just let the outside in. When the, the roof was first installed, I honestly felt like when I stepped from the middle room into the kitchen, I felt like I was going outside. So it's, this is where we spend the majority of our time. So it's really lovely to just be bright. And even on a gray day like today, it feels bright and it's just a nice space to be in. So one of my favorite things in the kitchen is the storage cupboards which I'm sounding like a bit of a broken record now but as I said it was one of the first things I basically think how can I hide my kids stuff so there's one for adults and one for kids and this one it's so many board games all of their arts and crafts because those things I found they were always typically being used at the kitchen table so I didn't want it away in their rooms and they want to be down here they want to be spending time in the main area but I didn't want it all in show. So these are beautiful. I just love the wavy handles. Um, this beam up here, when it arrived, it was a rusty red color and the roof had been installed. The roof was made factory finished in RAL 6019, which is the best color. It's the, it's the color of the beams and the roof and the windows and the doors and the tap. And green and red isn't a combination to me that is super obvious, maybe it is to other people. But when I saw the rusty red with the pastels, I thought it went really nicely. So to a little tribute to that red beam, I decided to paint this, the wavy handles in a pop of red. And I think it looks really sweet amongst the pinkies and the pastelies that are in the rest of the room. And then it brings you into, this is our dining area. And I love the idea of having a seating bench, just, you know, people are always lounging around and you've got lots of little spots where you can sit and you can, sometimes my kids and their friends, they're just all hanging out on the walls or you can sit there, you could read a book, you can scroll your phone, you can just chill out there. And one of the number one things I wanted in our kitchen was I'd seen these massive pivot windows and the minute I saw one of those, I thought, yes, really want one of those. I love the idea of just having one huge window that you can open and then from the inside, swing your legs over and just hop out into the garden. So we've managed to make that a reality. I can just show you. Sometimes the door's a little bit stiff and it doesn't make me look very good, but let's hope, yeah. So it's this huge window and in summer we just leave it open and again it's connecting with the outside and you get to look out onto beautiful greenery and I just love that. This is my favourite spot to sit and have a cup of tea and just 
Have a few minutes daydreaming, looking out the window and relaxing. So as we, you can see, we've got this chakra floor, which originally I think people think, I don't know what they think, but they don't think that I painted it, which I did. The floor was one of the decisions. There are so many decisions when you're doing a renovation. It really is overwhelming. But the kitchen floor was something I just could not decide on. I went back and forth. At one point, I really wanted a concrete floor. It was quite pricey. Um, we couldn't have plain, thick wooden planks, which I think are really nice because there's underfloor heating as well. I wasn't, I played with the idea of cork because I thought that would be really nice and cozy underfoot. And yeah, just went back and forth, back and forth. And in the end, I had seen a checkerboard floor being painted probably online. And I thought, I'm, I have to do that. I'm going to do that. So I ordered the cheapest engineered wood that I could possibly find because then I didn't feel bad painting over it. And I got it unfinished because obviously painting over a lacquered or finished surface is pretty tricky. So got it unfinished, had it installed. And that was a bit of a scientific experiment. <laughs> Spent quite a long time drawing out the lines, doing the most meticulous masking tape. I, at one point, I think I was gonna do the checks blue, but I think it's classic, it's an off-white with a little pinky undertone. And it's a miracle that it worked out, to be honest, because I didn't really know what I was doing. I started on this side, and then I did that side, and where the checks converged in the middle, because you imagine if every little check is a millimeter going out of sync, at some point when you converge your lines, you're probably gonna have a little bit of a situation. Luckily, and I didn't plan this, that situation is under the dining table. So if you're gonna try this yourself, then <laughs> maybe have your checks converge in a spot that isn't that obvious. Coming into the main bit of the kitchen, the marble, I just wanted marble. I think in our last apartment, we had a quartz worktop and there's just something about natural stone that is so beautiful. So when we got the chance to choose a new worktop, I wanted to give marble a go. And I know that I was worried, or people worry about the upkeep and if it scratches and if it stains. And the first week when we moved in, I was like, no, no, don't put that there. Don't do that. That's the marble sort of going around with the thing. Then I realized that that wasn't really me and I could never live like that. So just let it be, I'm like, oh, they have it in Italy everywhere and they have it in cafes and they have it in restaurants and I'm sure if it is good enough for them and it lasts many, many years, I'm sure it'll be fine and it's absolutely fine and I don't worry about it at all. Um, it's part of the, the way it ages, it's supposed to be part of the beauty, so just embrace that. I absolutely love the veining, I really wanted something super veiny and as you can see, the veining in here is actually a little bit green, so, that's why I chose this one and it goes really well with the rest of the colors. And we ended up taking it up the, black, the back splash. So it needed two slabs of marble to cover the whole area. And had we not done the back splash, it would have felt like such a waste of the marble. So we tried to eke out, you know, you have to buy the stone. So you wanna make it worthwhile. So we tried to eke out every last bit of it using as much as possible. And I think it's really striking and it's a lovely feature. So when it came to designing the kitchen, I've got a friend who's a designer and I said, you know, where do I start? How do I know um, what, what sizes to do and where I should have cupboards and where I should have drawers? And this is not really something that I've done before. And she gave me the most amazing piece of advice that I pass on to anyone that's doing a renovation. And that is write down everything that you own that you want in your kitchen and plan in advance, do you want that in a drawer? Do you want that in a cupboard? And use that as your guide. And that's exactly what I did. Literally down to the sort of napkins, you know? So a friend of mine had bought me these really beautiful napkins for my 40th birthday that are embroidered with our names and some say guests and they're really, really sweet. So I've got, I put on my little drawing, one drawer, napkins, just because I knew that 
there would be a place for those. There's even a drawer for Tupperware and all those sort of ugly plastic things that you don't want anyone to see but are necessary. And it's worked out so well. It's just so practical. That's the thing that I really appreciate about being able to do your own renovation. It's so functional and it really works for you and it's just so practical. So the dishwasher is right next to where all of the plates and bowls are stored. You know, all of the cooking utensils are just in a drawer right under. I'm a big fan of drawers because obviously you can pull it out and in a cupboard, the stuff at the back is a bit tricky. So wherever it's been possible, I've put drawers. And the other thing I really wanted was a breakfast station. I didn't want all the clutter, the toaster, the, the coffee stuff. I didn't really want all of that to be on show because we're not super tidy and I don't think that we could keep it perfect all the time. So I wanted that behind doors. So this is like a little breakfast station. I mean, it's not it's not perfectly tidy, but it's got all of our appliances that I don't think, I don't really want them on show all the time. My daughter loves organizing some things, so she's always putting these. She made me take her to Ikea so she could buy all these storage containers because we watched this program called Sort Your Life Out and she was so excited. That weekend we were in Ikea buying all of the storage containers so that we could make our life look very organized. And that's a bit of a hobby of hers, thankfully for me. Um, but that's just, yeah, so that's our breakfast area and every morning. And then we just close it and it's out of sight. I also wanted to have a little shelf because it's sweet to just, again, bring in little more pops of color, store just pretty things that make you smile every day. I've got a few little vases and pictures, candles, just things that look nice and make the space a bit more smiley. <laughs> so originally, when I was choosing a sink and a tap, I was really in love with this brass tap from Devol, and it was an aged brass, it's just the most beautiful brass thing you've ever seen. But to get that, and then it, I think it also came, they also have a little um, hot water tap in the brass as well. So at first I thought, oh, wouldn't it be so sweet to have that brass and the little hot water brass? But those taps are eye-wateringly expensive. And as I'm sure anyone who does a renovation know, most of the money goes on the labor. And when it comes to the point of putting in all of your things and finishing off, there's not really a huge amount of budget left. So I thought, okay, if I can't have the brass, I don't want an imitation brass. I don't want one that's not as good because every time I looked at it, I would just think, Oh, but it's not the Deval one. So I ended up going for this super fun, colorful, minty, and I'm sure it's finished in the same Raoul color as the rest of the, uh, the doors and windows because it's a, when, it, when it arrived, I held it up. I was like, yeah, that's a perfect match with the door. And it's really cute and it fits in. And it was not super expensive either. So one of my favorite features, I just had this vision of having this kitchen and having a double door and I had this vision of myself opening and flinging the doors out and sort of dancing, <laughs> dancing off into the garden. Obviously, I only ever open this door and walk out of it like this, but you know, the idea was there and I think it's very pleasing to have a double door. I think it just looks nice. Um, a really nice company, they made the doors, it's made out of timber. I really wanted timber for some reason. So the pivot window and the doors, those were made by one company and the roof is actually made of aluminium. Um, but because they're finished in the same color, you can't really tell that they're different materials. So this light is another one of my end of renovation budget dwindling hacks. It's a, quite an iconic uh, PH5 light and in these pastel colors and my friend sent it to me, she said, oh my goodness, this light would look amazing in your house but it was 600 pounds. <laughs> so I thought, hmm, that's just not gonna happen. So I actually bought kind of a knockoff, just a plain white one online. And then I just painted it in the same pastel-y colors. And most of them I already have. I've got the biggest array of all of this seating bench. It lifts up for storage and I've got loads of paint in there. So I already have most of the paint and then I just painted it in an eggshell paint which is a little bit of a sheen and also it can just be wiped clean because a lot of dust kind of settles on here and it's really pretty and it was quite an event though in order to 
get it over the dining table. I feel like doing renovations is just constant problem solving. And all the time, you know, I'd come to site, I was always here like checking on things, putting my paints on the wall, like, hey, what's going on today? And there was always a problem. Like, oh, this drain run isn't gonna work and the building control won't sign it off and this is a problem and that is a problem. And I'd always joke and be like, okay, solutions, not problems. I don't wanna hear the problems. But I always envisage having the light over the dining table. And then obviously once the glass roof was in, the builders are looking at me saying, so where exactly is your light? How are we going to hang? We can't hang your light over a glass, off a glass roof. I was like, hmm. So we came up with this really cool system. My husband's first degree was in engineering. So I'm pretty sure that this was his mastermind. And yeah, it, it worked out. And I'm really happy that we could fulfill my vision. I toyed with what art to put up in the walls here and had lots of ideas, but ended up just, I picked up this, during the course of the renovation, I picked up this little print from the Tate Modern and I love it. It's called Colours of London. So obviously it fits in with the colourful home, but also I just love London so much. I'm such a diehard Londoner. I will never leave. And I feel like, you know, some people identify as their job or as their nationality or as you know various things or as a sport or something like that but I really identify as a Londoner and I just love that this is colours from across London I really like the parakeets one so we live quite near Hampstead Heath where you see lots of parakeets and yeah I, I just love that it's all little bits of London some parts that I know well and some parts that I don't know as well but it's a sweet picture so in terms of my personal style, I would say that I just never grew up and I'm a little bit like a big kid and I just embrace the things that I love. I don't really care what anybody else thinks and it's obviously such a privilege to have the opportunity to do a renovation and I don't want a cookie cutter home. I have really tried to put my personality into the house and as I said, my background is as a scientist and as a child, I was more of an athlete. I was not good at art. I could not even draw a stick animal, stick person. So I didn't even really know that I was a creative person and doing this renovation sort of sparked this inner creativity that I didn't know was there. And I've really just let loose and chosen things and colors that I love to have on display and had a lot of fun with it. Okay, let's come out into the patio garden. So this space actually used to be the office. It was the weird corridor, an office which went from the back wall up to about here. And it had that entrance, which that's a sliding door that goes onto the street. And then, as I said, the internal concrete courtyard that went all the way in where the kitchen is. And then after we finished our building work, it was a massive ditch, essentially, and just full of rubble and dirt. And it was hard to imagine that it could be anything, ever be anything else. But interestingly, although we actually reduced the square footage of our interior through doing the extension, it feels like we have double the living space. But actually, if you look at the square footage, because the corridor was very long, apparently the corridor when you look at the numbers the corridor and the office had more floor space than our kitchen so we actually increased the size of our garden by I think about five square meters so that kind of blows my mind but I had all of these things that I wanted to fit into the garden and it was just as I said this blank ditch and I didn't know where to start so I actually this really lovely husband and wife local team was recommended to me by a friend and I thought you know what it's worth just paying a little bit of money to get a design for the garden because I'm so out of my depth here I've no idea what I'm doing so I had all of these ideas I was like I want to have seating and I want to have flowers and I just want to see green everywhere and I want it to be really whimsical and you know I had this huge list and um, cobbles would be great and you know 
just uh, can you just do something and fit all of that in and then send about 500 inspiration pictures so like yeah if you could just with those um 20 square meters just fit all that in that'd be great oh yeah and my husband wants a bike shed and my brother gave me this barbecue so I guess we need to house that somewhere so it was a really big list and they did it they made this amazing design and they used all of these little tips and tricks and honestly it was such a good use it was a few hundred pounds it was really good use of money to get this design because I would have probably just done something you know straight it needed the way that the levels were to the street it needed a couple of steps at some point so they did all these little tricks like they've done it in this shape and apparently that creates an illusion of more space and there's little paths like some steps to the bike shed and some concrete steps out and apparently when you have paths as well it looks like you're going somewhere and that again just gives you the illusion that the garden is bigger than it actually is and it's been planted up and it's exactly obviously it was only planted this this spring I think um, so it hasn't really had time to grow and the walls are not yet completely covered but I think that it will grow and it's a really nice spot to relax or oh, the other thing that I wanted that was the number one of my list was this is this area here is in total sun trap so I said we need to have seating for me to just <laughs> in the sun and have a coffee and just like bask and get all the vitamin D because as I said London is very grey and I love it so much but the weather really doesn't play play ball so again I can't take any credit for this it was the idea of the garden designers they had the idea so as I said the it was full of rabble when they came to it when they came to first look I think they were a bit sort of like oh what are we going to do here um, and they had the idea of for the seating these gabions so gabions are these metal cages and then they filled it with all the rubble in the garden. So all of this concrete, you can see broken down concrete, that is actually from our build, which is really cool because it's, you know, reusing the materials and it was already here. And then obviously because I'm me, I got my RAL 6019 in a exterior paint and went around and <laughs> painted the metal cages minty so that it matched the back of the house because I'm ridiculous but I love it and yeah it's just enough I just I don't I'm not a gardener I can't be dealing with mowing the lawn so I I love just having a little bit of flowers and greenery to look at my youngest daughter she loves playing in the mud so that's her dedicated pot to just come out here and dig and play with snails and as you can see she's put mud everywhere it's all over the patio like ruining it but she has a lovely time out here and it's honestly this it's not super big but it's enough for us so obviously you can see that this is all part of the new extension and it was built in London Stockbrook so this is actually a conservation area so there was so many hoops to jump through in order to satisfy the conservation committee and the local planning and all various groups and um, we actually started the renovation at the top of the house because we had applied for a two-story extension so you can see there's another little room up there which is also in the new like London stock bricks. They're reclaimed bricks, so I think they fit in the area really nicely. But you can see what's been built and what was there originally. But actually on our first planning application, the room at the top there was rejected. So we decided to, and it said the reason was that it was not in keeping with the local area, but every single terrace house, every single corner house on the terrace has one. So we thought, I feel like we've got a pretty good case here to appeal. So we put together an appeal, you know, marking out all of the houses on the street. Like this is where the, you know, the science comes in <laughs> and put it in. And it's a maximum, it's three to six months of planning appeal. It was over. A, so we started the build and we started at the top. We're like, oh yeah, no, by the time we get down, we'll have had our answer. And finally, the height of the kitchen depended on the story on top. So we couldn't really really start because if we weren't going to get the second floor extension we would have lost quite a bit of height in the extension which we didn't really want to do um yeah so that was a huge hold up and it was really stressful but we got it we got it the appeal was overturned in the end so i feel like you often don't hear success stories of planning so it's worth appealing and yeah i also painted the plastic black gutters minty because why not 
So we moved into this home in 2020, in the middle of the two COVID lockdowns. We quickly managed to buy and sell in between. And we, we were living around the corner before in a smaller apartment and we were keen to get a little bit more space. And what I loved about this house was the location. So it's a really great location. It's on a really cute street. We live in a gorgeous neighborhood that I didn't want to leave, and which is where we were before. It's got such a beautiful community. We've got so many friends. My kids go to local schools. So I really wanted to keep that, you know, best friends with the guys in the local coffee shop. Um, so we wanted to stay in this area. And this home, I mean, people really were not falling over themselves to buy it. So it was, it was in a livable state, but the layout was a little bit odd. But we could instantly see, oh, if we just moved this and added this on and we could add a bathroom in here and this room's really large, but maybe we could squeeze in a bathroom and that might be a better use of space. So we, we took it on as a project and with the aim of um, building, creating something that would work for how we lived. Um, the idea of just moving into something that somebody else has made, it just might not, it might work for them, but it might not work for you. So that was one of the real appeals of renovating and just making the space work for our family life. Now let's head back inside and I'll show you the living room. Hi. So I'm going to put this enormous pocket door, which I think is very cool, to a side and come into our living room. So this room, I would say, is a work in progress. There is not much on the walls and there will be a coffee table one day. There's quite a few bits that aren't finished, but we're getting there slowly. And this is just the sort of, the TV is in here. So although we've tried to disguise it in one of those frame TV where it looks like a picture, that is the main drawer of this room for our kids. <laughs> they probably spend the most time in here. It's an east facing, it's east facing, so it gets the morning light. So it's not super bright, but it's quite a cozy space and I wanted it to be decorated in, I think there's two things that you can do if something's not really bright. You can go for something dark and like embrace the cozy, but the, the dark colors just don't work for me. So I've gone for something like quite muted, although it's painted this whole bookcase in a rainbow, it's quite a muted rainbow and I actually find it really calming in here. So when we first bought the house, um, as I said, that was the kitchen. We had our dining table here. We lived in the house for two years as it was before we, while we got all of the permissions and thought about the new layout and thought about what we wanted to do. So we had our dining table here. And this wall did, was a bookcase, it was, but it was slightly piecemeal. It was like in three different sections and then it came around the corner as well. And then there was a sort of weird door with half glass. Um, so we opened up the entrance so it's a little bit more, felt a little bit more grand. We added back in all of the period features, like all of the coving and the picture rail, none of that was here. And then we just, rebuilt a bookcase because I, I really love the idea of having a wall of books. We have, we already had quite a lot of books to start with. My mum's house is essentially just a library. I have some books that belong to my grandparents, like all of the old puffin editions, quite a few that I've put up at the top just so that they don't get damaged are from them. And I'm not quite there yet, but I think we've got like one or two sections still to fill. And I know that sometimes with bookcases, people do all these really cool styling things, but I think I'm more of a big picture person and when it comes down to the tiny little details, that's not necessarily my forte and I just love the idea of having a wall of books. <laughs> I didn't have to do any like faffy styling and it's, it's a library. Apparently, if it's a thousand books or more, it's considered a library. So I think that's a pretty cool, that's a pretty cool thing to have in your living room. I don't actually come in here that often. It's maybe on like Saturday nights, the kids want to watch Strictly Come Dancing or sometimes after school, they just want to chill out. So I just wanted to have a really comfy sofa to spread out on. And I just went for something really neutral so that 
it could just sort of blend in and then popped on a load of colorful cushions to make it extra comfy and give a little splash of color and personality. And yeah, there's a lot of lounging that goes on there. As you can see, the bookcase is a sort of rainbow and the top color of the bookcase is in keeping with the ceiling. And I painted upstairs in the spare room a pink ceiling. So we, we did the house from the top up. So the way that it worked out, a lot of things that went on at the top fed into things that then happened later or informed decisions that happened later. And I painted the spare room ceiling this bright pink color that I'll show you later. And a pink ceiling is just a great idea. <laughs> I've learned so it gives off a little glow it's really warm and I just thought I need more pink ceilings in my life so this is this color is actually called serene peach and all of the colors pretty much most of the colors in my home are from a small British brand called yes colors and they're quite a new company and their paint comes in pouches which is really cool because paint obviously you've got these big tins and then it's really hard to dispose of and it's really bad for the environment and their pouches are actually recyclable so they've got this two they've got really great colors if you love color, really vibrant, really a whole range of stuff that you wouldn't find in perhaps more traditional paint companies. But they also have this sustainable element. And this is all of their muted, so they have different ranges. And this is mostly from the serene range, because as I said, I wanted it to be really calm, calming and serene. And so serene peach is what's on the ceiling. And I think it has, I think it does just what it says on the packet, which is make it feel serene. This light, this is from the same lady as the candle, the bow candle holders. And it's that pop of red mixing with pastels that I just can't get enough of. You'll notice that when I really like something, I just use it again and again and again. And you know, you can never get too much of a good thing. And I just loved, I just fell in love with it and thought, yeah, that's the one. That's gonna be such a nice statement in our living room. And it was a bit of a nightmare to get it up. I think, you know, with old lights, it's always a little bit tricky. I really love the idea of having a wood burner because, you know, I wanted this room to feel cozy and it's used mostly in the evenings. And you know, the winters get pretty dark and dreary here, but this would have been where the flue behind here would have been where a flue could go. But actually all of our waste pipes actually come down there and you can't really have waste pipes going up and a fire going, coming down and a fire going up. That's not really gonna work out. So. I wanted to look into electric, but sometimes I don't know, they maybe look a bit naff. But what we did was we just bought this, um, I think it was on eBay again, this little fireplace. And then um, we popped in this little, um, little, it's a little grate essentially, and it allows you to burn, um, it's basically this and it has cotton wool in it, and then you pour bioethanol fuel into it. And, you can essentially put this in anything. You can put it in a fireplace grate, you can put it in a wood burner, and then you can have a little real fire just from burning bioethanol, and you don't need a flue or anything. This is just completely for decoration because I think it looks really cute. And then I just, I got this tile. I mean, this tile is essentially my entire personality, and I always wanted to use it somewhere in the kitchen or in the bathroom. It just never quite worked out. And I had a few samples of it. And then I thought, finally, oh, I can use it under the, um, under the wood burner. And I just ordered a few more samples. And I might build a little frame to go around it eventually, because as I said, we're still a work in progress in here. So before we go upstairs, I'll just show you into our little downstairs loo. So as I said, in the original house, you would come in and then there was the entrance down to that funny little corridor thing and as I said we're end of terrace so it's a little bit different normally your front door is at the front of the terrace and then you go through and it's all quite long but I really love having the entrance on the side I think it makes the space a little bit more usable and I just like the flow of it but I really wanted to have a loo downstairs because that's just really handy for kids and guests and everything. So we popped one in and as you can see in a minute, I just wanted to get a really fun wallpaper and wallpaper all over the walls and the ceiling and just make it a really fun little space. So we're gonna go up the stairs now and you'll notice that maybe the stairs are not, not the most traditional, the most traditional stairs you've ever seen. I ended up, 
I got really into the rainbows as the course of the renovation went on. And as you'll see, I have painted them in a rainbow and I think stairs just lend themselves really well to that because there's just that natural going up and it's a natural place to put a gradient of color on. And it's obviously running through the core of the home on every floor and we've kept the rest of the hallways quite simple. So we added all this paneling in, which I think is really beautiful, painted it in a really neutral color. Um, you know, the doors are all really neutral, the walls are just white, and then there's just this pop of crazy rainbow as you go up. And it was really a labor of love, getting all of the old paint. I mean, there was a red carpet originally, there was gold, like spirally wallpaper. And I spent really hours and days like sat, um, heat gunning and sanding um, before I actually got around to making my little stencil and doing my pattern and painting it all in the most joyous colors you'll ever see. So I love this print, which is from a really cute online store called Le Print. And yeah, on your way out, just don't forget to shut the front door. Okay, so I really love this picture. So I think we need to just pause a second. It's probably only me that loves this picture, but I'll just take a little bit of time to say something about it. So as I said, we work in public health and I found this, it's a reproduction map of, so it's Soho back in the 1850s and it's Jon Snow's cholera map. So there's this big outbreak of cholera in the 1850s in London and a guy called Jon Snow, who's now known as the modern father of epidemiology, he made a little map and all of these little marks um, indicate a case of cholera. And because he was trying to figure out, you know, what is the cause of this outbreak? How, what can we do to stop it? And what he noticed is that the concentration of cases is all around a water pump. And so, you know, so many people are dying of cholera. And so they isolated the pump. Like, I think there's some famous thing of him going and like snapping the handle off. And that was the source of it, and then that essentially stopped the outbreak. Um, so yeah, epidemiology is obviously the study of disease and how and why it affects certain groups. So I just think that's a really nice thing. And it's like, got a little meaning. So this is the main bedroom. And I would say that this is this is maybe my attempt at trying to decorate like a grown-up. Um, so you'll notice it's not all full of the pastels. I had this idea that I, we already had these wooden cupboards sort of made of ply. And I had this vision idea that I wanted the walls to be this darkish green color. And it was kind of inspired by nature or to be a bit like a forest. And it would just be dark green and wood. So the floors are wood and the cupboards are wood. And then there's this like lovely deep green color all over. And once it was all done, I ended up, it was all painted in a green and I ended up like going around afterwards, like adding blue on the skirting boards and like painting the cove in pink because I just can't help myself. Um, so adding those little touches in, but I do, it's quite calming. And again, it's a room that's mostly used in the evening. So it's a darker color and it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit different from my natural style, but I do like it. Originally we had, this is our bed that we bought from our old flat. And it was a really sad millennial gray fabric. And every time I looked at it, my heart just sank a little bit. It didn't go with the green. It looked terrible, but it was perfectly good, really comfy bed. And there was not really any reason to get a new one. And so what I ended up doing, I just had this vision one day. <laughs> I just suddenly, some days I'm just walking around and just get this idea. And I thought, oh, maybe I could, um, you know, cover it, it's just fabric. So maybe I could take the bed to part and just cover it with a fabric. And I just saw like blue and white stripes in my head. And I was searching online for blue and white stripey fabric, but I couldn't really find anything or it was like super pricey. And I ended up finding these curtains in the fabric. And what I did was I just bought two pairs and I put one <laughs> as the curtains. And then I used the other pair to upholster this bed. And when I say upholster, that sounds like I've got loads of skills and it's really fancy. What it essentially means is I got a staple gun 
and took the bed to pieces and then just stapled on the fabric and it was really easy. And I think the effect's really cool. And now we don't have a sad millennial gray bed anymore. Then there's like a couple of vintage pieces. So my little dresser that I got from a vintage shop and also these little cane rattani bedside tables that I found on Facebook Marketplace, which is, that's one of my favorite hobbies, is to <laughs> waste hours of my life scrolling on Facebook Marketplace to look for the, you know, those odd bargains that you can find. And I like the idea of having a chest of drawers as a bedside table. So that's what I've got on my side, because then, again, you can just put all of the stuff out of sight and just helps to keep things a little bit more tidy. And then we've got these really sweet little uh, pinky lights that move, so that's quite handy. And then these gorgeous little pictures that I bought from a sweet store called The Bow Store. Um, and she curates and collects art from all over the world. And I think these are sort of mid-century Swedish paints. And I just love the colors. I thought they're so pretty. And it's called Posy One and Posy Two. And when they arrived, um, there's some really sweet, um, on the back, there's a really sweet little notes and it looked like it was uh, grandparents to their granddaughter giving them the prints and it's got some sweet writing on the back. And the colors on e of each of them are a little bit different, but it's nice to have, again, these little vintage pieces. We've got another little pocket door here. That's a <laughs> bit of a favorite design feature. So we managed to, originally the house had one really big bathroom, which although is lovely and feels very luxurious, felt like in London when space is a bit of a premium, having a massive bathroom is maybe not the best use of space. So we ended up turning the one bathroom that was here originally into a spare room with an ensuite and this ensuite and a storage cupboard at the end. So that's almost like three or four rooms we've <laughs> fitted in there. And that's just really handy. And it's allowed our daughters to have their own bathroom. That was one of my top renovation lists um, from the beginning. I was like, those girls, you know, I've got two teenage girls in my future and I wanted not to share a bathroom with them. I don't know if my background in science has how that's affected the design, but I think that my husband is also a professor and I think that we both have quite analytical minds and I think that that's really useful when you're thinking about space and how to get the best layouts. Obviously the colour and the finishing touches, that all came after, but I think the core of getting the house into the way that we wanted to live, maximising the space, putting in storage, which was the thing I was most excited about, where, you know, given the chance to renovate, the thing I was most excited about was not having shoes and coats galore to be tripped over as soon as you walk in the door, which has been the situation in every other place that we've lived. You know, there was the opportunity to design spaces to add in a hallway cupboard for that purpose. And we've got these cupboards in the kitchen that stores all of the kids' arts and crafts and many, many board games that we have. And I think it's been useful in that way. Now I'll take you over to the spare room, which used to be the bathroom. So here we are. Um, <laughs> you might need to put your sunglasses on. This is the pink ceiling that I was talking about that gives off the glow. You almost, you genuinely do need sunglasses, especially with the pink throw. And this is a spare room, so we added, we added the ensuite in at the 11th hour. We suddenly thought, oh, there's a girl's bathroom upstairs and then our ensuite that guests can't really access. And that's not ideal if they have to keep going upstairs to share with the girls. Should we just put an ensuite in? So we said to the builders, do you think you could just put a really small ensuite as small as is physically possible? And they did because there is, there's a little, there's a weird little window that the bathroom obviously had this nice big sash window and this weird little window, but that lended itself really well to adding a little shower room in. Um, and it's really nice that it can all be separate. 
Um, so it's for guests when they come. And sometimes I actually Airbnb out this room because I just find it quite a fun thing, meeting people. And then you can see they've got like little tea and coffee and stuff. And I call it, it's called the rainbow room. And it's, again, this was my first room that I did with the yes colors. And that's when I totally fell in love with them. And I actually, this is one of the rooms where I didn't paint 5,000 paint samples on the wall. I ordered the colors, I got the, the swatches and I just picked and I said, right, the woodwork's gonna be blue, this, the window's gonna be yellow, the ceiling's gonna be pink. And I also got a bit of this electric mint green, which I've put in the cupboard. And then I just did it and it was great. <laughs> And everyone who stays here, they just say that it makes them feel so happy and that that's the aim. So it's like, it's small and cozy and I feel like it wasn't that much before, but with all of the colors, I think it's made it a really cool space. So as I said, we added the bathroom at the absolute last minute and the budget was like basically zero for it. And so we just put in the most basic things, like the most basic shower tray, the most basic shower door, the plainest white, white tiles. And then just, I started off with this idea of doing a monochrome thing. I was like, oh, that could be cool. So we started off and they painted all the walls black or like railings, railing, in fact, it's like a really dark, dark gray-ish black. And the tiles were all white. And then it went in and I thought, I absolutely hate it. <laughs> this was me trying. That was like an example, I guess, of like me trying a thing that just like wasn't me. I just thought, oh, I just can't, I actually just can't live with this monochrome. I can't, even though it's for guests, I just cannot live with it. So I was thinking, what can I do? So we painted the whole thing white. And I thought, what can I do? You know, everything's been installed. It's, we're on a budget, like how can I spruce up this space? How can I make this room, you know, match the main bedroom and also be a bit more like jazzy? And I ended up undertaking the most ridiculous project that I can't believe that I did and finished, but it worked out, it's really cool. I actually spray painted the shower fittings and the shower tiles. I seen this really crazy image on Pinterest and it was kind of based on that. It's different colors, different design, but that's what gave me the inspiration. And so I spent about, a week or two weeks, um, nobody was living here. So I had all the windows open, like my mega spray mask. And I used a, a waterproof spray paint and I sealed it all and spent hours and hours doing this meticulous masking tape. And I don't think any, people just think they're tiles. They always ask, oh, where did you get the colorful tiles from? But that was probably my most ambitious uh, little DIY project. And then, I obviously can't tile, so I ended up painting the same pattern on the wall just so that it went all the way around and I like, add a bit more interest. So my favorite space in the house, and you probably don't hear this very often, is actually a hallway. So I already mentioned about the storage being really important when we got to redesign the configuration of the house. But the other thing I was really excited about and really committed to was having the laundry upstairs. So I'm not sure what's coming in America, but in the UK, we always tend to have our washer and dryer downstairs. And that just doesn't make sense to me because that is not where the clothes are. Um, and it is especially not where all my kids' clothes are that seem to be needing to be washed way too regularly. So my dream, um, which shows I'm getting old, was to have the washer dryer laundry area outside my kids bedrooms and that is right at the top of the house and i've made it really colorful and joyous to make the sort of boring chore of doing laundry a little bit more bearable and when we go up and see it you can see for yourselves what i'm talking about okay now i'd love to show you up to my daughter's floor Okay, so this is undoubtedly my favorite part of the house. It's a hallway. I like to call this part of the house the Pastel Palace because this was when I first, this was the first area that um, I chose all of the colors and all of the decoration. And as I said, we did it from the top down. The light up here is unbelievable. So the ceiling used to end 
where this ceiling is. It used to go all of the way across. It used to be the entrance to the bedroom used to be here and all of this bathroom and all of my daughter's bedroom and all of these cupboards used to be one huge room. So it mirrored the space of the master bedroom below. But as I said, we were super keen to give our daughters their own bathroom so that we didn't have to share with them. And this was a natural place to put a bathroom in and there was no window there. So we ended up adding a, taking the ceiling out and adding a skylight. But then we thought, well, why don't we just take all the ceilings out? Because we had actually applied for loft conversion just to, you know, while we were at it, maximize the space. And there's an interesting conservation feature called a butterfly roof. So if you see the roof slopes, slopes up that way, and then on the other side of the house, it slopes that. So I guess like butterfly wings. Um, and that's a conservation feature that in the local conservation plan, they've really explicitly stated that they want to preserve those. So although there are many lofts in the area, those were done historically and they want to conserve the feature. And to be fair, they do look really nice on the street. So I do understand that. But we thought, well, if we can't use the space, let's just <laughs> take the ceilings out. And it gives us this mega height. We added in all of these relax windows and it's super magical up here, I think. So I thought it would be a fun idea. I let my kids choose the colors for their bedrooms. It was chosen from once a blue and once a pink. And they then chose the exact hues from what I'd like to call a curated selection. And then I thought it would be sweet to paint the door in the same color as the main, I've painted all of the woodwork in their bedrooms the same color. And then you, you know, it's like marking out, oh, this is so-and-so's room, this is so-and-so's room. And then the bathroom as well. You can see the door, the green is, goes in the same as the green paneling. And then I had these cupboards, which are housing the laundry. <laughs> And I thought, oh, we've used pink, we've used blue, we've used green. Those are all my favorite colors. Where do, I, where do I go now? And at first I thought, oh, maybe yellow. And I painted a little swatch of yellow on the door. And then I thought, oh, that is a lot of yellow. I just think it will be a bit overwhelming and I think it'll be too much. And then one day I just thought, I'm gonna paint a rainbow. And that, this was actually the first like rainbow item in the house. So the other ones, this was the original inspiration so everything else rainbow elsewhere has followed from this so I thought I would just go for it try it out be brave and if I don't like it you know what is the worst thing that can happen it's just paint and so I could just repaint it so went for it and it's my favorite part of the house and I absolutely love it and I genuinely don't mind doing laundry <laughs> So this picture up here is something I actually added just a couple of weeks ago. As soon as the, this space had been painted and the window had been painted, everything was done. There was this massive blank canvas above the window that I felt was just calling out for something. So, you know, this is sort of a year and a half or since this top bit has been finished, maybe longer even. And I always just saw, I just saw in my head a massive carousel but I never could figure out how to make that a reality because how are you going to get a piece of art that is a affordable and be the right size and see a carousel <laughs> and then I saw online you know I follow loads of fun and Terry's accounts and I saw somebody using peel and stick wallpaper and framing it and that was the light bulb moment I thought I'm so doing that so I Googled carousel wallpaper and I found this really cool peel and stick and I put it up and I spent a good, a good day measuring up there, hanging off a really tall ladder and I managed to install it myself and I even managed to build a little frame around it and that was my first time sort of soaring wood and it made me feel like I was really, you know, really manly. <laughs> This is um, my kids' bathroom. But as I said, it was really keen for them to have their own space. When I was a teenager growing up, my best friend, I remember so clearly, her family did some work in their loft and I think they had previously shared a bedroom and they managed to squeeze in two small bedrooms and a little shower room. And it was two sisters sharing. And I remember just 
thinking this was the best thing and they've got their own bathroom and it was such a cool place to go over to her house and get ready and in our house we all had we all shared one bathroom and I had a brother and that just you know that whole thing didn't seem as cool so I thought oh that would be so nice to give my girls you know I thought that was such a great thing when I was younger so I thought oh it'd be really nice for them to have that kind of space growing up and friends coming to get ready and so we've managed to squeeze it's quite a small space but I was determined that we would squeeze in a shower and a bath so that they had both and my spray painting escapades actually began here so the shower I ordered a sort of brass shower fittings and you know sometimes the building gets held up and it was in a box for ages I didn't bother opening it when it arrived and the day came they said okay we're going to install the shower now like where is it and I opened the box and I thought, oh, I don't really like the finish of that brass, <laughs> you know, brass and gold, I think it's quite tricky because you see something online, but it was quite this blacky brass and it had a, I just, I was not vibing with it, but I think it had been installed. It, it was actually, I saw it installed and I just thought, oh my goodness, I really, really hate the shower. It's really ugly. I just, I don't like it. I was like, Obviously, in the grand scheme of things, this is a really irrelevant problem to have. But I ended up thinking, what can I do with it? It's already in, it's already installed. We can't replace it now. That's going to be so much work. And I decided to spray paint the fittings. So that was my first foray into spray painting. And I'm totally obsessed. I think there's stuff, the, the chairs in the kitchen, those were spray, I spray painted those. There's stuff I've probably missed out all around the house. Um, there's a, a mirror in my bedroom that I'm working on. So many things. But this was where it all started. And they've also got a sort of greeny, funky, colourful grout in their shower, which makes just plain white tiles. Really simple, but really effective spot. So I'm a bit jealous of their shower, to be honest. Mint is my favourite colour, and it always has been. Ever since I was a child, if you ask my friends from when I was younger, blue and white stripes, another thing, they're always... You do not need another t-shirt with blue and white stripes. And, and it was always drawn to that colour. I think it just goes well with my colouring, so maybe I would choose it in my clothes. And it just, it sparks joy. And when we were renovating, I just knew that I wanted to use loads of it. And the kitchen especially, it's, it's all through the house, you'll find it everywhere. And finding the perfect mint is something that I have turned into somewhat of a scientific exploration. I actually ended up clearing out a lot of my samples because I think they had an entire cupboard worth of minty samples at one point and it was getting a little bit unhealthy. Okay, so shall we have a little peek in one of my daughter's bedrooms? So this is the front bedroom, one of my daughter's bedrooms, and as I said before, it used to be this one almost cavernous room that almost felt too big. So it's a really nice size now. And as I said, we decided in the whole hallway and bathroom to take the ceilings out. But when they were renovating up here, they actually took out the ceilings on the whole floor. So this entire floor, it was, a, it was just a shell and there was just bricks everywhere and ceiling joists and exposed ceilings. And the first time I walked into this bedroom and the ceilings were out, I thought, wow, that looks unbelievable. And surely there's something that we can do to use this space because it just feels sort of criminal to just plop the ceiling back again. So we, what we've ended up doing is adding a little, like we call it a little mezzanine nook and <laughs> popping a little ladder in. And so the kids' bedrooms are actually a mirror image of each other. So they have the identical size bedroom. I mean, I'm sure that they've measured it down to the exact centimeter and you know, any, if anybody had one centimeter more than the other, that would, huge arguments would ensue. But so they've both got, a little mezzanine and I just think it's so fun I would have absolutely loved that when I was a kid you know I said I'm a big kid I love sort of playful design and interiors and all of their friends think it's super fun and they go up there and I'm sure that they just take sweets up there and hide and take tablets when I've said that they're not allowed to watch and do all sorts of things um, and who knows what they're, what's going to be going on when they're older but it's a really cute little feature that they both love when I'm decorating, one of my favorite styles is 
I really like white walls, off-white walls, and then bringing colour in, in the woodwork. So I think, actually, the master bedroom is the only room with colour on the, actual colour on the walls. So I decided at the beginning that all of the woodwork could be painted, and as I said, I gave my daughters the choice of the colour, and then we just painted all of the woodwork and the windows, originally started off and I wasn't feeling super brave and we just painted the architrave in the blue and the window remained white but then it just wasn't cutting it and we had to go back I said no we have to go for it we have to do this properly and so then the whole window has been painted in the blue and it's really cute and she's got this little hanging chair that we bought from our old apartment um, this one's a total bookworm and it's just nice to have a little spot to read in. I think that home is, it's a place to just be yourself and to relax and to be around things that you love. Um, and I think that that is the home that we've created. It's a really fun and welcoming and special place that we just really love living in. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.